Gift Biz Unwrapped, episode 368. Attention gifters, bakers, crafters, and makers. Pursuing your dream can be fun. Whether you have an established business or are looking to start one now, you are in the right place. This is Gift Biz Unwrapped, helping you turn your skill into a flourishing business. Join us for an episode packed full of invaluable guidance, resources, and the support you need to grow your gift biz. Here is your host, gift biz gal, Sue Monheit. Hi there, it's Sue, and today in particular, I am thrilled that you're here. This is the day that you're going to get an inside peek into our very first gift biz bash. What's a bash? If you're new here, hold tight. You'll experience it in just a few minutes. But first, I want to remind you that doing events like craft shows and farmers markets offers great photo and posting opportunities for social media. I bring this up because you've told me you're discouraged when you don't see any of the time and effort you put into social media moving the needle on your sales. Putting in more time posting in the same way isn't going to magically bring you results. You need to change the way you're posting and what you're posting. You don't need to put in more work. You need to put in the right work. That's when things will change. If you need some help with this, I've got you covered with the Content for Makers program. Content for Makers will enlighten you as to why your social media activities aren't converting into sales. It will also show you how to put less time in and start seeing activity that will increase your sales. Just imagine a day where you know exactly what to post and to get it done in five minutes or less. Then you can spend your time interacting with potential customers, deepening relationships with those you already know too. And it builds upon itself naturally. Yes, this is possible. Content for Makers includes a step-by-step strategy to formulating your unique plan based on your business and your products. Then you'll have 375 social media prompts over a full year of ideas. Along with the 375 prompts come 375 image suggestions, so you're not left hanging on the creative. These prompts and image suggestions can be used for all platforms and all types of posting. Images, live streaming, reels, even email direction. There's more to content for makers, too. To see all the details, just jump over to giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash content for makers. But honestly, at only $27, it's a no brainer. Why carry on posting as you've been doing all along, expecting different results? Sign up for Content for Makers now and see the transformation of your posting experience change before your very eyes. Giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash content for makers. Ready and waiting for your immediate access right now. Moving into today's topic, I'm going to share with you what may very well be a huge source of insight into where you are in your business journey and why you might be struggling right now as you try and grow. I call this the five gift biz growth stages. And as I go through them, you'll be able to easily identify which stage you're in. The magic here is that I'll also tell you exactly what steps you should take to move on to the next stage. No more chasing shiny objects or trying to do all the things at one time. Easy does it, step by step, from one stage to another. You get to take a deep breath and enjoy the process versus feeling like you're always behind. Sound good? Then let's get going. Welcome to the first Gift Biz Bash. I am so excited about doing these bashes because one of the biggest things I'm always hearing is, how do I get more eyes on my business? How do I get the word out about what I'm doing? And Nobody, I don't care if you're just starting or if you've been in business for a while, nobody feels like they have this all wrapped up. Everyone's looking for new ways of attracting eyeballs. So what we're going to do during our time together is I am going to talk about my five 
gift biz growth stages for about 10 minutes or so. And then after that, we're going to get into the showcases. To kick it off, let's dive right into the five gift biz growth stages. I have the evolution of a business as I teach people how to start and develop their businesses, but these stages have become very, very clear over time. Also, there are very concrete, specific steps that you can take to get from one stage to the next stage to the next stage. The very first stage of your business growth is what I'm terming visibility. So that's like visibility, but with a B. Bizability. At this point, you wouldn't have started yet, but you're thinking about the possibilities. Maybe a friend or a family member has said, Oh my gosh, what you make is so beautiful. You ought to start a business. Hadn't even been on the radar, but all of a sudden, one little sentence, you're like, Ooh, maybe. But then when you start thinking, it gets kind of scary. You have no clue what to do. When people are invited into Gift Biz Breeze, I ask, what's your biggest challenge right now? People who are beginners are like, well, I don't know what to do to start. I don't want to start wrong. You know, all of these fears come up. Lots of times in this very first stage, people are concerned because how could I possibly start a business if I don't have any business education? But that contrasts with looking out into the world and seeing that other people are doing it. So there's an element of hope there too. Action steps, if you're in this stage, visibility is first to really think through what a business would look like that you think would feel good to you. It's the dreaming stage still, but to solidify and clarify the dream a little bit. Then make a commitment to yourself that you're going to start because You can go on for years and say, yeah, I'm thinking about starting a business and never, ever start. So put a date on the calendar or just commit to yourself that, yes, I'm getting started and here's my very first step. This is what I'm going to do. And to help you along with that, the other thing I say to do in this stage is commit by telling three people. I don't care if it's a friend, family member, your coworker, say it out loud to somebody. They'll hold you a little bit accountable. And the hardest thing, like we know with anything, weight loss, anything, same applies to business. The very hardest thing is just to start. Then I want you to define two products because with makers, lots of us make a million things, right? So what are two products that could be something that you would sell and then gift this to two people? Okay, so I'm saying you can give it for free or if someone has said to you, hey, would you make me one of your scarves? I'll buy it from you. Then let them pay for it. Through that transaction, gifting or selling with two people starts to build the momentum. You start to get the feel, okay? That's stage number one. Stage number two, I'm calling validation. I would say of everybody I work with, probably only two to 5% of people ever even do this step. This is time of testing and discovery, narrowing in on what products will actually sell. So you're actually finding your market. You're perfecting your product. I've had a lot of people who go into Makers MBA, take a lot of time in the beginning, refining production. So the end product is exactly right. The candles burn clean or all the different things that go into the production of your product. This is also the stage under validation when you will introduce your product for the very first time to an audience. And this can be exciting, but it can also be really anxiety provoking because now all of a sudden you're going to put yourself out there. The action steps that you're taking during this stage is to sign up and attend one or two shows, in person shows. Could be a farmer's market craft fair. It could even be just a show you put on in your house because you're really not establishing your business yet. What you're doing is testing and seeing who likes your product, which products sell better than others. If something's not selling, what do you need to do to tweak it so that it will sell? You're validating that the product that you're going to put out into the world has a market where people will actually open their wallets 
push the button on the computer to say buy, the people will actually give their money for your product. Because you know how it is. People all day long will say, oh, that's beautiful. That looks great. But they won't pay money for it. So it's really important to validate your product before you really, truly get started. This is why so many people will say, I went to the craft show and no one bought any of my products. We have to be realistic about whether we have a market. This is the second step. It's also where you get to know who your customer is, who is attracted to your product. And Amy, great that you're here because you revised who your customer was over time. That's a perfect example. All of this is validation in the beginning, surprisingly, before you should even really start your business. And again, as I said before, I'd say 2 to 5% ever do this validation stage, which is why we have such a high close rate on businesses. They just think you can put everything out there and people will buy. Particularly in handmade, you may need to make sure you validate the market. Okay, moving on to the third stage. I call this making it real. This is where you officially start your business. You start adding that professional structure underneath. The structure you need is create a solid foundation. Thinking about what is my brand going to stand for? Notice we're already at stage three. Fear sets in here. It resurfaces up again because now it's time to make investment personally and financially into the business. This is also a time when you start questioning your current ways because now I'm really, truly going to do this. I am making it real. You're rethinking a lot of the manual systems that you have in place. So the action steps when someone is in this stage is to formalize your business name. Now, this might sound way late in the game, right? Because a lot of people right in the beginning, I'm going to start a business. What am I going to name it? Well, what if you see that the product that you thought you were going to sell isn't really the one that people will pay for? And so you want to change your product along the way. And then you're stuck with a name for your business that doesn't match the product that you're selling, right? So it's better to test the market, like I said, in stage two, and then finalize it in stage three. Here's where you formalize your business. You actually register it with the government, sole proprietor, LLC, which is, of course, always my call. You open a business bank account because now you have your company name. Really important to keep your finances 100% separate from personal finances. You also get to do your logos and your colors at this point. Not that they might not change over time, but how are you going to start off? You add in some type of an accounting system, not just an Excel spreadsheet. And then right here is where I want to start building up to two sales channels at minimum, two sales channels. So you may open an Etsy shop and also do face-to-face selling, or you might do networking because you're trying to get into small businesses in the area like state farm agents or realtors or you know who knows what it depends on the product but two different ways that you can sell your product because each channel has its own audience even online sales platforms like Etsy has a different audience than Amazon handmade than of course people who just come directly to a website if you were starting that way So having more than one way to attract sales is going to help you get in business faster. So this is all in the making it real stage three. Here is when you start buying wholesale. So things that you're making and including in your product or its packaging, instead of buying retail prices, if you're baking, going to the grocery store for flour and sugar and eggs, you're starting to buy in bulk. Maybe not everything right away, but it's starting. These are the steps in stage three. Now we're going to jump over to stage four, which is upping the game. This is where you start developing consistency with the business. You're starting to see sales steadily coming in. You know who your customer is. You've buttoned down your processes and you're understanding sales cycles. Probably for all of us, handmade products, Christmas, Huge time of the year for selling, but other times too. Specific industries, I'll just say gift baskets. Some gift basket people do great at Easter and Mother's Day, some don't. 
So you have to see for your own individual audience what the sales cycles are. You get a real handle on them here. And your desire in this fourth stage is to grow. You want more sales. You want to get bigger. This is where you want to reach that revenue number that you've been thinking about in your head. But it starts to get overwhelming and you're juggling everything because if you're making and you're selling and you're doing your accounting, all of a sudden you've got a lot of plates in the air. So you're starting to feel some anxiety and you're juggling. You might also in this stage be tempted to diversify. And I am going to say for sure you want to resist that. Meaning, let's say you sell candles and now you're like, okay, well, this is great, but I'm also going to sell some other product that doesn't even relate. I don't mean not extending the line of what you sell, but I don't want you to get out of what you're getting known for, what you are becoming the expert in. There's the temptation here to do that because you think, well... I can make more money because I will have different products to offer. You want to stay tight and stay solid with the products that you currently are doing. Steps that you're taking as you're working through this, getting your own website. Even if you're on Etsy, these other sites that are online, you don't own those sites. The golden nugget is always to have your very own website at some point. This is the stage where you really want to start thinking about this. You're making sure that not only have you been collecting email addresses, but you have an email marketing strategy in place that you're using regularly. You're also solid on social media. You have a structure and a plan. You know which platforms are the best for you. Those types of things all happen in this fourth stage. You build a team now. You become a boss of people because you just can't handle all the juggling. So you start building a team because you simply can't do it all yourself. And maybe you're starting to think about brick and mortar, or you're putting your pieces on consignment or wholesale. All those types of things are ideas that are coming up that, again, depending on your business, are things that you would be putting in place here. I would say between 60 and 70% of all businesses are in these two stages. And many stay stuck in these two stages permanently. And that's where your business starts to grind because you don't have everything in place. So it gets hard and you try to make changes. And sometimes you make changes that don't fit with what you were doing before. So you start confusing your audience as I was talking about diversifying before. And sometimes you flip back and forth between these two stages too. Okay. Then the final stage I'm calling keeping it coming. This is all about sustainability. I'm talking about the sustainability of your business. You're getting consistent sales in. You've probably been in business now for a number of years and you've seen your role change. You know, you've always been a visionary, but now you're a visionary leading a team. Your role has changed from being the maker to now being a manager of the people who are the makers. Things that can happen during this stage, burnout, boredom. You've done this for so long, right? I saw Amy. (laughs) Okay, those who are listening on the podcast, (laughs) Amy like throws her head back in the chair. (laughs) Like, oh yeah. Um, You're thinking about the future. You know, what is the future going to look like? Is this going to just be more of the same? And do I like this anymore? because you've just been in for a while. On the good side, you've got reliable systems in place. You've got reliable sales coming in. And the other thing that you see as a characteristic of this stage is you become the problem solver for others who run the business. They're coming to you to ask the answers to things that they're actually having to put in place. Your role has changed. Action steps to take during this stage watching the market to make sure that your product is still relevant. Think of face masks. <laughs> In a couple of years, hopefully next month, people who all they did was face masks for their business, if they aren't looking at the market, that's not going to be a thing. Knock on wood, hopefully, <laughs> right? Same things happen for other businesses and products. Think of Blockbuster and VHS tapes. If you're not watching what's going on in the market, very easily your product can become irrelevant. 
I so you got to be careful of that because you're the visionary in this stage. You want to find new and exciting opportunities to sell, to re-energize yourself and your business. Because just as you can start getting tired of your business, your customers can get tired if you're not continually bringing new things on the table. This is the place where you can extend your product line because now you are solidly entrenched and people know you for something. So you're able to take that really loyal following and a portion of them will be interested and move into another product with you, but not right away. Like I said, that doesn't happen until stage five. And then another thing you might do here is start thinking, well, if I were to decide not to keep going in the business, who would take over? Someone in the family? Do I want to sell? Not that you're doing it tomorrow, but you start thinking about what would the future look like for the business and making sure that you have things in place for that to happen. Okay. And I'd say in the evolution of handmade businesses, about 10% of all businesses get to this stage where they're really thinking about the future and keeping excitement going in the business, et cetera. To summarize the five stages, we've got visibility, which is starting with the idea and what could be. Validation, testing and discovering what the market wants in relation to your products and tweaking them accordingly so you have someone to buy. Third, making it real. Everything under getting your business out there to the public in a legal way Official way, I guess is a better word to say it. Fourth is upping the game, building on those sales so you get consistency and reliability. And then the fifth is keeping it coming. You've got all your systems in place. Your role has changed. How do you continue to stay relevant, keep excitement being drawn to your business, and going forward from there? Okay, any questions? Does anybody want to unmute and tell me where you are, where you see yourself? Go ahead, Ellen. It's nice to meet you, by the way, Sue. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. I'm buddy. thrilled that you showed up. I love that. <laughs> My buddy is here, too. Um, so That's okay. We're keeping it real. Um, I definitely, for for sure, I have a couple of different ways that I sell, a couple of income streams. I have one um, helper who comes over to help me clean my tumblers and package them and all of that good stuff. Sales are pretty consistent. And of course, I would love to have more. (laughs) Definitely growth, you know, always yearning for that growth. But I feel like I have a a great seed planted. And now I'm starting to see the the fruits of the growth, but it is bringing a tad of anxiety because I am kind of doing all of the things. Perfect. Well, then, yeah. And so that falls within what I talk about there, that thinking of ways that you can get some of that off of you, because, you know, I think we all feel like we're super women and we can just carry on forever, but that's going to lead us to either getting sick, hurt or discouraged, you know? So, and it's such a relief. I, I know anyone can vouch if anyone's brought on help, such a big obstacle. It's a big fence to jump. It feels like. But once you do, it's like, why didn't I do this sooner? You know, and it can be even something little, you know? Yeah, for sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I have been watching your products and seeing. So I like that you're putting yourself in that spot. That makes sense to me. Cassie, were you going to say something? Sure, definitely for me as well. I feel like I'm grinding my wheels all the time because I do have a full-time job outside of the business. And so it's hard to grow. I'm just in that middle point where it's, I either need to take the leap and grow big or just keep grinding away with my evenings and weekends. So that's where I'm at. Yeah. Wendy. Yeah. I think I also am in four. Um, I have multiple places where I'm selling things. I do the events around the holidays. I'm online. I'm selling in marketplaces I think I don't have certain things that are lined up that need to support that kind of growth. I've got to get my email marketing system going. I don't have a formalized accounting system. I am still on spreadsheets, you know? So I think there's all these like little bits and pieces of things that need to get put into place to help me kind of get through to those next stages. Yeah. And that's where I say that stage three and stage four 
sometimes overlap. And especially now, because I'm introducing these stages that this can be a guideline for people who are starting. So Wendy, this could have been you like a year or two ago, maybe, but you know, they do go over each other because it's usually when you start the business, you think, oh my gosh, I need an email list. And oh my gosh, what about my logo? Like you think of all the things right in the beginning, this way it gives some clarity to which stage are you in? Here's what you should do now. That helps you move to the next stage. Here's what you do now. But it's a more orderly way of doing things, which makes everything a lot calmer than all these things that you think you need to do right out of the shoot, you know? Yeah. All right. Let's see how we're doing on time. I think the best thing for us to do right now would be to move into the showcases. Here's how this is going to go down. Everyone gets a chance to talk. I'm suggesting that we take about a minute and a half based on who's here, up to two minutes, you know, potentially. I'm trying to keep these somewhere around 45 minutes or so, which is why spots are limited to even join the bash. And so here's what I want you to do. Tell me your name and your business. And if it's not automatically obvious what your product is, and then tell us something you have going on. If you have a special promotion coming up, Even locally, like if you're at a craft show in a local area, go ahead and share it because we have listeners from everywhere across the country. So you're going to be able to expose them to that. They may not even know that there's a show right in their area. And then you tell them to come and see you, of course. So you can do anything like that. If you're looking for a collaboration with another maker, Perhaps you do jewelry and you were thinking for Mother's Day, it would be really fun to pair jewelry with another product where you guys actually bring two products together and sell to both your audiences. Collaborations like that or going on lives or whatever it is that you're searching for, you can call that out too. And then finally, tell us where online people can connect with you further, whether it's your website, whether it's an email, a social media platform, whatever it is. Okay. So three things, what your company is, anything you have special going on right now, and then where people can go to find out more. And Kim, I'm going to make you the star of the show to kick off the whole bash, like everything. How about that? Perfect. I wish I had confetti. Yay. (laughs) If I was on my other app right now, I would be able to do that, but not here. (laughs) Take it away. Yay. So I, it's so weird to see my background, not my kitchen. I'm in my living room, (laughs) but I'm Kim from Kim's Cottage Confections. I have a brick and mortar bake shop located in a tiny little town in Middlefield, Connecticut. And right now we are focused on Easter because that is going to be within two weeks. So we have clients every day coming in for Easter products, simultaneously kicking off a very busy wedding season. So, so yeah, um, so when when this goes live, Easter will be over. Okay. Right? So we'll right. be talking. So Mother's Day then, we'll yeah. be moving into Mother's Day promotion, pro, uh, promotions, but really kicking off a very, very busy wedding season. It seems like everything that was scaled down or postponed from 2020 and 2021 is really coming to fruition in 2022. So we are ready to kick off a big, big year. And, you know, you could find me Instagram, Kim's Cottage Confections. We post, try to post every day, Facebook, similar. And my email is Kim at Kim's Cottage Confections.com. Perfect. All right. Anita, why don't you go next? Oh, hi, everybody. My name is Anita Hausman, and I am from the Hershey Gifting Company, formerly Treasure Touch Promotions and Gifts. We have just transitioned over to our new name as of January 1st, and we are a gifting and specialty company specializing in custom printed ribbon. So for the next couple of months, we are really, I'm really focusing on working with other businesses to get them branded, whether they want to brand their product or offer. We're moving into the, like Kim, the Mother's Day graduation prom season, which is very busy for me with ribbons. But also this is a great time for me to work with 
small businesses and even companies that want to brand themselves in an affordable way. So using ribbon and other things, we do t-shirts, apparel, beyond the pens and promotional items that are out there that you often see at trade shows. We are transitioning over to our new website today, actually. It moved over to a new uh, platform and you can find me at the Hershey Gifting Co. on the website, Facebook, or you can email me directly at Anita at the Hershey Gifting Co.com. Wonderful. Okay. Let's see, Cassie. If I can unmute myself. <laughs> My name is Cassie Menchofer of Cassie's Country Cupboard, and I create better for you meal helpers such as soup mixes, baking mixes, spice blends, that sort of thing to help you get dinner on the table without losing your sanity. And I am looking for referrals to all of your friends who might be also trying to start a business like that, any sort of dry mix goods. And I do have capacity where I can co-pack for them at very low minimum quantities. And you can find me online at www.cassiescountrycupboard.com. Perfect. Wonderful, Cassie. Wendy, you're up. Hi, I am Wendy. I am the owner and creator of Mystic Moon Soapworks, and I handcraft soaps and lotions and all kinds of bath and body products um, in my home here in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, um, including a men's line of beard care and beard washes and lotions. I am gearing up for some special uh, collaborations I'm going to be doing with the LGBTQ community for Pride Month. So I'm going to have a special line of soaps and there will be a contribution that we're working on to help support homeless LGBTQ population. So I'm really excited about that collaboration and that'll be launching in June. And you can find me on Instagram and Facebook, but my website is mysticmoonsoapworks.com. Wonderful. Uh, Joyce. Hi. Hi. I am Joyce of Joyce's Baskets. I have a... I would say corporate gifting boutique. I've changed the name to corporate gifting boutique. And I've got a lot of exciting things going on and having growing pains and all that good stuff. But in the next couple of months, I have a major undertaking that I am revamping, redoing, and restructuring the entire website designs and all. So that is a major continuing edu- continuing project for like forever and a day. So what do you offer? What do you offer? So everyone who's listening to this podcast, what could they come to you to get? What do you offer? I offer custom gifting for any special occasions. If you're having uh, events, we do events. We do printed ribbon as well. We do personalized gifting tags. My business basically circles around local hand delivery, what we ship. And so we're getting into a brand new baby line, which I'm excited about that. I have brand new baby vendors coming up. So I'm excited to put something together. I think if Amy said, either you said, sometime after a while in business, after being in business for quite a while, you kind of get tired of seeing the same old things and you want to just like throw in the towel. So I'm trying to refresh and revamp, you know, myself here. Okay. And where can people find you, Joyce? You'll find me. On, I'm really on Instagram more than anything else. So it's at Joyce's Baskets on Instagram. But my Facebook page is still the same, Joyce's Baskets. You can find me there. Or if you want to hit me up and uh, pick my brain for whatever reason, or you may have something that you think that will go good with my products that I have already, uh, hit me up and send me an email at Joyce at Joyce's Baskets.com. And where are you in the country since you deliver mostly local? Where are you? Sunshine State of South Florida, Miami, Florida. There you go. All right, LaShawn, you're up. Hello, I am LaShawn Barnes, and I am the owner of Forever Mona Lisa. Forever Mona Lisa is an eclectic brand of handmade jewelry, necklaces, earrings, bracelets, and made of various semi-precious stones, metals, and wood and bone. And I am located in Charlotte, North Carolina. I have a website, which is Forever Mona Lisa. I am also on Instagram, Forever Mona Lisa. And if you're listening to this podcast, it'll be around Mother's Day or whenever you hear it, you can use promo code BASH, B-A-S-H, for a 10% discount off your purchase at the website at Forever Mona Lisa. 
LaShawn, you've upped the game with a promo code. I'm so proud of you. I love that. I never even thought of that. <laughs> Leave it to you. Ellen, what you got for us? Hi, guys. Okay, so I'm Ellen Montoya. I'm in the, sh- the Sunshine State too, Joy. <laughs> so I'm the owner of Emery Tumblers. I make these gorgeous glitter tumblers. I also make laser engraved tumblers and sublimation tumblers. And I also have another uh, part-time business where I teach other women how to make them both through private and online instruction. So I can help you with custom orders. We have Mother's Day coming up, end of the year gifts, a lot of coaching gifts, everything for the end of the year coming up. And if you're looking to learn to make tumblers, I can teach you right in my workshop here. I'm in the Lithia, Florida area, or I have an online coaching community as well. Coming up, I have a couple of local events. May 1st, I'll be in Fishhawk, which is Lithia, Florida. May 8th, I will be over in Brand. I'm sorry, White Oak Cottage, which is in Lithia, Florida. And I have another show June 4th back in Fishhawk. And LaShawn, be bash 15. (laughs) 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 If you mention um, this other podcast, come out and see me. And I'd be happy to extend 15% off a Tumblr for you. And I have a website where you can find me. And I'm going to offer that on my website as well. B-A-S-H-15. So you can use that at emarietumblers.com. Love it. Okay, Amy, take us home, girlfriend. Okay. I'm Amy Hughes. I'm the owner and managing partner of Marshmallow MBA. We are a gourmet marshmallow company based in York County, Pennsylvania, and we're manufacturing marshmallows for the retail and wholesale customers. Trying to think how to frame this. I have no special events coming up. However, (laughs) and it's only because we have reduced the number of events that we're doing in person. But what we do have is collaborations ongoing with two Breeze members. One for Mother's Day. We're collaborating with Lydia Cox. She makes uh, handmade jewelry. For us, we have a honey-based marshmallow that has no corn syrup in it. And we're partnered with Lydia for Mother's Day. We're doing a Be Kind and Be Sweet marshmallow box. So you'll be able to see that gift box up online within the next two weeks. And we're also ongoing with our collaborations with Anita over with the Hershey Gifting Company because we're basically neighbors. Wendy, I think we're a neighbor to you as well, which is exciting to know. And we will be at Lancaster Pride this year. Anita is helping us with a number of custom printed ribbons, not only for the gift boxes, but also for the Harrisburg Dessert Festival, which is coming up on July 16th in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You can find more information about Marshmallow MBA at MarshmallowMBA.com. And you can reach us at info at MarshmallowMBA.com. And we're available at Marshmallow MBA across all social media because, you know, we're only so creative. Perfect. I think that's a best practice is a single name everywhere makes things so much easier. And you just rebranded and we just did a podcast. It's about four weeks back now, but you can find it, Amy with Marshmallow MBA, all about the rebranding and pivoting of her customers. She found that, you know, it was a different customer than what she thought when she started out. So it's a great example of of what we talk about, just the evolution through the stages and great examples of collaborations to taking advantage of this opportunity with discount codes, all of those types of things. So also Not only are you listening to the people who are talking and what they have going on, but think of some of these ideas for yourself too. Like some of the collaborations that Amy's doing, does that spark an idea for you? Not copying exactly what other people here are doing, but what other ideas get ignited to you because of things that you're hearing through these showcases? That's another way that you can use this. And As long as you're a maker of a handmade product, you are welcome to come on as a participant in this bash. This is the very first one that we've done. I'm planning on doing them twice a month. The platform is going to be just like we talked about. 10 minutes, I'm going to be talking about some type of a point more in a training mode, a little bit of Q&A on the topic that I talked about, and then we're doing showcases. 
The showcases are limited because if I have too many people in, as you can imagine, it could just go on and on and on and on and on. So I have to limit how many people. So if you're interested, make sure to sign up right away. You can do so at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash bash. You can sign up for one. You can sign up for all if you want to guarantee your spot. And I think, Amy, you've already signed up for several, right? Yeah. Because really it is limited. When I get to that limit point, you can't get in anymore. So if you're interested, I would love to have other people join us. And again, I just gave you the link, giftbizunwrap.com forward slash bash. All right, you guys, thank you so, so much for joining in. Those of you who are here live, just hold tight. I'm going to end the recording and then we'll chat for just one more minute. Take care and I will catch hopefully many of you at the next bash. Before you move on to your next activity today, make sure to get your name on the list for at least one Gift Biz Bash. You can see the dates and times for upcoming sessions and get signed up over at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash bash. And if you're enjoying the podcast and would like to show support, a rating and review would be wonderful. It helps spread the word about the show too. There's also another way for you to get something tangible in return for your support. Visit my merch shop for a wide variety of inspirational items like mugs, journals, water bottles, and more featuring logos, images, and also quotes to inspire you throughout your day. Makes a great gift too. And we just added some new products for the season. Turnaround is quick and the quality is top notch. Nothing but the best for you. Take a look at all the options at giftbizunwrapped.com forward slash shop. All proceeds from these purchases helps me offset the costs of producing this show. And now be safe and well, and I'll see you again next time for the Gift Biz Unwrapped podcast. I want to make sure you're familiar with my free Facebook group called Gift Biz Breeze. It's a place where we all gather and are a community to support each other. I've got a really fun post in there that's my favorite of the week, I have to say, where I invite all of you to share what you're doing, to show pictures of your product, to show what you're working on for the week, to get reaction from other people, and just for fun, because we all get to see the wonderful products that everybody in the community is making my favorite post every single week, without doubt. Wait, what? Aren't you part of the group already? If not, make sure to jump over to Facebook and search for the group Gift Biz Breeze. Don't delay. Come join us in Gift Biz Breeze. Today, 